Welcome back to another cold wintry day here in Stockholm. This is the midst of Stockholm Design Week and we're continuing our show here at Trendgruppen Design TV. My name is, as always, Stefan Nilsson and I'm going to be your host today where we have two established Swedish design companies, Papelina and Svedese, but also a guest, Hanna Nova Beatrice from The New Era. Another Swedish design company who's doing launches this week is Papelina. Let's talk to founder Lina Rickardsson. Hi Lina, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. It's cold here in Stockholm. So um, we're here to talk about Papelina, the company that you started 22 years ago. Um, yes. Why do you still have production in Sweden? What's the story behind that? When I started Papelina 22 years ago, I was hand weaving a rug in linen and cotton. And when I needed help, uh, I found this small weaving mill in a village in Dalarna. And I took my rug and I went up to Dalaslöjne, the name of the small weavery, and I found out they were weaving in plastic. And I've been there a couple of months and I asked, uh, maybe I can do one for myself and that was okay. So I made this new modern rug uh, that was twice as much material. I used really bright colors and uh, wide uh, stripes and it looked totally different from the one they were used to weave. And then I was out looking for customers that could pay a little bit more for this new rug and I found them in the design store. And I was so happy that uh, I, I found a, a customer that could pay a little bit more so we can still use the weaving mill in Sweden. To be able to um, work in, in Sweden, uh, there were three people when I started working, now we are 25 people. To keep a small business going that started for 50 years ago, I feel I think that's fantastic, so I will never leave. It's also so nice to be close to the production. We can reduce so much. We also buy the material from Sweden and uh, that's what we're going to do. So now you have these uh, fantastic rugs and carpets and these design stores and you're also internationally present. What's the, how many countries are you present in and what's the story about this international thing? I think we sell uh, you can find us in 40 different countries around the world. I think it is the combination of the material, the new pattern that we can do in the chacard looms. I also think is the, uh, that the rug is unique, has a good design, easy to clean, long lasting, UVP proof and so on and so on. I think we meet the high standard uh, that the customer wants. And I also think that a lot of countries have never seen anything like this rug before. So you, I see in the patterns that you're working with, you both have very straight and graphical design and then also a softer lines. Do you think, where, where do you see the patterns going? Do you think we're going to see more graphical design or do you think we're going to see softer design in the future? Uh, I think we will see a mix of patterns uh, that fits the time we are in. I mean, I do both almost every season. Sometimes I use the softer lines and sometimes I do the graphic designs and this year I have an organic shape and I have also a, a stripe shape. So I think we will see both. And also when I'm working around the whole world, uh, I need to look what the trends is in US and also to have to look at the trends in maybe Japan and it can be totally different. Interesting. Absolutely. Um... Let's continue to talk about uh, the collection that's been launched now and uh, now this spring. Um, you found some inspiration in pine cones for one of the rugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's a very, very Swedish and Scandinavian object, I would say. Do you yes. find, are there other objects in nature you'd find inspiration for or, or you want to make into rugs? <laughs> Maybe, maybe not, but it seems like I'm always looking for inspiration everywhere I am. When I'm out traveling, when I'm in the woods, out on the lake, everyday things. So 
I'm not really sure what I'm going to do next. But of course, a lot of the inspiration comes from nature. Speaking about uh, the collection, can you just uh, overall give an introduction to the new collection for 2021? We can see two new patterns, Randy and Cotte. Randy has a stripe with an angle, a very simple, elegant rug. Cotte is a softer, organic pattern that we weave in the chacard looms that can make patterns more with a more round shape. Uh, we have also used um, uh, new colors in uh, uh, Max, it's an old pattern that we they make in new colors and also in mono is a one color rug that is very popular that we also use the new colors and also carl with a simple uh, uh, line pattern that we also use the new colors so there are kind of a a wide range of new patterns and colors this year well thanks for uh, talking to us lina thank you My next guest is Swedish-born Tina Hellberg. Uh, welcome to our studio. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How do you like the new Stockholm Design Week? Well, I think we just have to adapt and make the best of it. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. So, um, what do you do at Swedish company Svedese? I'm an interior designer and I work for Svedese since uh, four years on a consultancy basis. So what is your role? What do you do there? Do you like select furniture or, or what's, what's your role? Well, I work with their existing designs. And um, for instance, when you have a sofa, what kind of uh, treatment for the wood on the sofa? And I choose textiles, leather, or... So I make new additions on existing furniture. Oh, okay. Very yeah. interesting. Very important, I would say. Yeah, I think yeah, so. To make it long lasting, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And how you can combine I mean, they have a lot of furniture, so mm. I also come up with the new ideas how to combine the furniture in a new way, maybe. Mm, and nice. also in a new color, of course. And speaking of colors, what can we expect color-wise 2021? I will continue with yellow. Yellow? And yeah, because I think yellow is such an uplifting color. And you can see it when you look at different companies, uh, their textile collections. There is a lot of yellow. Uh, but are we talking about egg yolk yellow? Or? No, not really. I, I would say it's some kind of mustardy yellow, earthy tones, and also very subtle yellow. And uh, the beige trend is continuing, but maybe also adding a little bit of yellow to it. Okay, mm. very nice. Mm. Um, we're going to be speaking about another Scandinavian designer very soon. We're going to be talking to Sakari Hartikainen, who made these tables that we see in front of us. Um, what do you like them? Do you like them? Oh, I love them. I think they're perfect also for Svedese. And uh, I mean, the texture of the wood here, it's treated with some white pigmented uh, satin oil. Mm. Looks really very nice Scandinavian meets Japanese, perhaps, would mm -hmm. you say that? Or yeah. is it my interpretation? <laughs> could be, could yeah. be. But the organic shapes and also how you can combine them, I think it's really clever how he made the design. Well, thanks for stopping by, Tina. And I will see you here in Stockholm quite soon again, I hope. Yes, I think so. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Moi moi, Sakari Hartikainen, um, a Finnish designer who's made a new fantastic table for Swedish brand Svedese. Hi, moi, how are you? Hey, I'm very fine, thank you. That's good. I'm sorry that you can't be here in Stockholm for the Stockholm Design Week. Um, we still have the lockdown and the pandemic, but I'm really glad to catch up with you on the phone. So, um, you have been designing a table for Svedese. It's very lovely. Um, are you happy with the product? Yeah, it's, it's turning out very well. And overall, it's been a very, very pleasing journey. Very nice. It's very, I would say, from my interpretation, it's a very good mix or match between Japanese design and Scandinavian design. It's very elegant, I would say. Speaking about elegant, this piece is very sculptural. Are you inspired by sculptures? Well, 
In a way, I find sculptures inspiring since they have already a value itself and the possibility for self-expression. And with this kind of strong character, they also have a possibility to connect emotionally. And some of these elements, um, which can be also found from nature, we can very easily connect to. Mm. Um, I often aim to kind of highlight these characteristics in sculpture form and try not to draw too tight line between a functional product and artworks. Mm. And therefore, a sculptural object and products gives a perfect place to experiment and push these boundaries, as often regulations in purely functional products holds back from finding some of these limits with material itself and possible techniques. And in the end, I believe it's important to surround ourselves with pieces we feel in a way connected to. Very nice. It's beautiful. It is like a piece of art, almost more than a piece of furniture when you look at the table. Um, well, thank you, Sakari, for joining our um, program here, or TV show here in Stockholm. I hope to be able to see you soon, uh, either in Stockholm or in Milan or somewhere else for the International Design Fairs next time. I, I hope to see you as well. I'm happy and proud to welcome our next guest to this TV show, Hanna Nova Beatrice from the magazine The New Era. And welcome to uh, Trend Group and Design TV and happy Design Week. So um, you took the opportunity during the pandemic when everything is down, we're on lockdowns and everything's closed. You took the opportunity to launch your own magazine. How come you did that? I wouldn't say I took the opportunity during the pandemic, it was rather I did not know it was coming but I was brave enough to, to, to continue and to do it and that's been great because the home has been the centre of attention for all over the world and uh, that's where we spend so much time and I think the idea of quality and what we crave uh, really has been a focus. Uh, so I think a very, very good, high quality print magazine, printed on environmentally friendly paper, local in Sweden and distributed worldwide, where we discuss the home in, in a really sensible manner, um, is, is, is a good product of now. So um, what have you spotted so far that sort of like occurred because of the pandemic? Well, if you look at the design industry, I think, uh, I mean, it's been a devastating time at every level, but it's also, it hasn't been affecting the design industry uh, so much. I mean, they've done good numbers if you look at the business side. And that's, that's been a positive thing, people have spent time at home. Uh, but what I do think, uh, they've also looked and reevaluated their business strategies, uh, which I think has sped things up. So the, the digital side, uh, they worked a lot on that and, and also um, gone through their production models. Like, is it better to produce in Sweden or should we do it in this way and how can we be more effective? And I think every business, whatever industry, um, it's good to do that and look at the sustainability part of it. So you say that sustainability is the, the big gainer from the pandemic? I think that's definitely the big gainer from the pandemic, yes. So what, what do you think about um, our homes, for instance? Are we going to change the way we furnish or, or decorate our homes after the pandemic? I think we will leave the cities. No, we will see. I think definitely we spent, I think most of the people already have uh, refurbished at home, maybe invested in better desks and uh, and so forth. Uh, and that's why the industry has this first year uh, of the pandemic uh, done pretty well. But I think on, on a deeper level, it will also affect uh, how we live. Uh, we've all been you know, stuck at home thinking, is this what we want? I mean, where we live really decides, uh, you know, it decides how we live our lives to such, a, such an extent. So 
do I want to live in the suburbs of a city or do I want to live in the city or do I want to leave the city altogether? Mm. And yeah, of course, the, the, the prices of the summer houses has, have already arise, but I think in a year's time, we will see a completely different, on a different scale. People will leave the cities, work more flexible. What about offices? Do you think we're going to work in the future? <laughs> at all? Or are we done working now, staying at lockdowns and you know, not I spending? I really think mm. that if you are a company today, you really have to be attractive uh, to keep your people because we've realized, wow, we don't need to go into this huge big office and work during these circumstances. I actually quite like working by myself. So I think we will see a change in, in, in where we work, not just how we use the office. We will decide like, no. I don't want to do this. I'm going to set up my own business. I'm going to do this. So one, yeah, companies need to look after their people to a much greater extent. And two, we will not be in the office every day. Of course not. Interesting. And uh, in our spare times in the countryside, we will be reading magazines like the New Era magazine. We will be reading quality mm. magazines and we'll be harvesting our <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> I'm not so sure I'm going to do that, but I can harvest yours. Yes, for sure. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by, Hanna Nova. I'm sure I'm going to be seeing you on town um, sooner or later. And um, happy Design Week. And thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Happy Design Week to you as well. Have you missed an episode or want to re-watch one? Don't forget you can always go to trendgruppendesigntv.com and find all the shows that we've made there. Also on the same site you'll find high resolution images, press releases and all the necessary information you'll need to make your Stockholm Design Week successful.